Today, we will be talking to well-known dermatologist, Samriddhi Minas, and answering all your questions and busting myths about self skincare. <laughs> Welcome, Samriddhi. Welcome to Talk This today. We are very thrilled to have you with us. And, you know, we totally get it. The beauty world is buzzing with friends and social media content, and it can be overwhelming, you know. For me, it is very overwhelming. And we have all been there, scratching our heads about what to follow or which products to use. So we thought, why not bring an expert to shed some light and help us navigate through this area of beauty? For more information so that exactly what we are here today for so we have samriddhi with us welcome, welcome to- thank you so much for having me oh, no no thank you so much for joining us so yeah. for all of our viewers out there i'd like to give a little background about you dr samriddhi minhas is a gold medalist and distinguished professional in the fields of dermatology cosmetology and our favorite anti-aging skin treatments <laughs> boost over a decade of hands-on experience she has become a prominent figure known for her expertise and commitment to personalized care now what stands out about her is her holistic approach going beyond addressing external concerns and tailoring her treatments to meet the unique and individual needs of each patient now, i'm really interested to see what that really means so let's just dive right into it. Welcome, Samriddhi. Welcome so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so us. much. So, you know, when we talk about anti-aging, some people would just tell you, why do you want to look young? Why do you want to, don't want to gra- age gracefully, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't see what youth means. Youth yeah. joins us to the energy of being healthy. Youth joins us to enormous energy all around and which makes us work, which makes us travel, which makes us explore. So youth is not just space. It's us trying to live our lives till we can every moment and not retiring from there. That is how I would put anti-aging too. That's beautifully put. Yeah. In fact, Namita... I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in here because maybe we need to change the word anti-aging. We're still aging, but mm-hmm. and aging gracefully is this. Yes. Aging gracefully is doing everything to the full potential. And that includes, like, I have not met any human being who is like, why did you say I look younger than my, except unless you're 13 or 15 or something, <laughs> that you would say that, oh, you don't look 50. And I, I love it. I, I, I <laughs> want my age. Okay, but when I go out and people say, oh, you look here. Oh, oh, really? I don't. And I know it's all, (laughs) but you feel good about yourself. So maybe the word anti-aging needs to be changed, but we're aging. But yeah, aging gracefully, aging with our full potential and understanding that this is just a number. I love it. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's amazing, um, Samriddhi. You know, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, when you were pursuing medicine, you probably had so many fields to choose from. Why did you choose dermatology as a field? Somehow, this was the branch which always attracted me. Coming from a family of doctors, having a surgeon, a gynec, an ENT surgeon, a medicine person, skin was initially very underrated, you know. People used to think, what about skin? We can just ignore it. The impact of skin on person's mind, heart, confidence, emotions, and also the impact of internal body on skin was a very underrated concept, which always attracted me. And here I am, enjoying (laughs) the best of both. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting. Right. I mean, it's it's one of our organs, right? Like, yeah. It's the largest organ. The largest (laughs) organ, yeah. I wasn't yeah. so sure. I was thinking, am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to be there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have the experts. So yeah. tell me, like we're all in the Delhi NCR region. And unfortunately, we are known for our pollutions out there. And that affects all of our skin, including our insides. But it affects our outsides as well. But 
when it comes to skincare, what are some of the common misconceptions that you hear or like things that people go about doing and you're like, oh, you're cringing and saying, don't do that. What is that? Absolutely. So the latest trend, if you've heard, everybody's just talking retinoids, retinoids. Yeah. So skin is about a balance. You have to have the perfect balance of exfoliation, moisturization, antioxidants, and sunscreens, your food, your sleep, your anxiety and stress levels. So everything combines to form skin. We cannot have one cream. We pick it, we pull it, and we say, this is my glow cream. I'm going to apply this, and I'm going to glow. No, that doesn't happen. You need to understand your skin first. So like, I, you know, people would not put a sunscreen on a winter day or a cloudy day. Or maybe when they're inside, but like we are right now on our electronics and we may just be without sunscreen. But is this the right thing to do? No, it's not about heat. It's not about sun. It's about light. It's about radiation. Even blue light is from the laptops have so, said to be more damaged than sunlight. The light which comes through clouds does more damage than the light which is directly shining on us. Oh, have wow. you seen people on hills? They have that pigmentation around. Yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, the people think that, okay, I put a higher SPF. Now I don't need to repeat my sunscreen. No, it's not that. You need to repeat your sunscreen after two to three hours. It, oh. Okay. Frankly speaking, above 30 SPF, it doesn't make a difference. It just makes a difference of oh. over two to four percentage of protection. We are 93 there, we are 97 on 50. So it's not a huge difference here, what we are seeing. But and what here is I am happening? like striving <laughs> to get the SPF. I'm like always. Yeah. yeah. yeah I more, more, SPF is like more protection. Yeah, that's right. 30 plus is good. What is needed is regular use. So you need to use it every three hours. And okay. you use, need to use it inside on a cloudy day. That These are more important. And you need to find the right sunscreen, which is cosmetically as acceptable. Otherwise, you may just end up not using it. Oh, wow. So that is very important. And then again, we need to understand the creams which we normally use have some SPF of 15, you know, just a super added SPF. That is not enough. You need a sunscreen, even with your morning SPF uh, moisturizer or anti-aging cream. 15 SPF is not it. At least 30 is what we need. So this is one of the most common mistakes we are doing right here. Uh, this is one. Then, of course, we have a lot of them. So we'll just go through as we go. <laughs> The second one is exfoliation. You know, a lot of people feel if we exfoliate, uh, people come to us, they say, Puch aisa karo, you know, let the skin come out. But that's <laughs> not going to help you. There has to be a balance. Like I initially said, it has to be a balance of hydration and exfoliation. You can't just keep on exfoliating, exfoliating, troubling your skin barrier all the time it won't work it's going to damage you more than help you out so that's a very very normal misconception which people have exfoliate use peels use lots of retinol you have to balance it with moisturization so gentle cleanser is the best yes it depends if you if you have an acne prone skin we may like to give you a little more exfoliating but generally what you need to do is use the right moisturizer for yourself. Even acne-prone skin needs some moisturization. We can't just leave it. But the moisturizer has to be right for an acne-prone skin. So these are some of the misconceptions on which one really needs to work. Well, I think there must be a lot of misconceptions. We just got... <laughs> oh, there, there's a list. We, we have a list of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, and of course i so, must also be following some of them <laughs> no wonder <laughs> yeah so uh 
Samriti, are there any recent advancement or emerging trends in dermatology that you find particularly exciting or promising? Because we read a lot about a lot of things. So what do you say about you that? You know, there's a lot happening here. Uh, every day something is happening. So that's why we always we go for trainings, workshops, just to update, update, update. Uh, something which is really helping a lot of us is now that we have scanners. We have a face scanner. We have a hair scanner. So we can see beyond the skin and beyond just the scalp. We can go oh. deep inside. We can see what is the hydration, what are the pigment spots, what, what level of anti-aging we need and for your hair we can see if there's inflammation if the follicles are still there what's happening exactly on your scalp so this is towards the diagnostic part which is a very interesting thing of course yes. when we have robots all over the medical field we have robots coming here artificial intelligence we've all got about robotic hair transplants and yeah. it's in the pipeline to have robotic fillers and botox in <laughs> fact robotic botox has already started so wow, everything really? is being made <laughs> <laughs> there are soft ways where you can just see how this particular filler is going to change your face a lot so, of times uh, uh like you know for me especially like pigmentation becomes a big issue so what does a lay person do instead of going to the dermatologist where do we go we go to the makeup counter Okay, we go to like, you know, I'm just naming because this is what we do here. We go to Nika, we go to Sephora, we go to these places. And we're like, oh, tell us something anti-pigmentation or tell us a thing that will make us glow. Anti so I want to understand as a dermatologist, how do you feel about the new products and the new promises put out by, without naming names, with by these makeup companies or these big, and you know, a lot of women get lured by it. Acha, this one is this expensive. This has gold in it. This has silver in it. This has a part of the moon in it. I don't know. It's like <laughs> so much out there. Yeah. How we buy into it because we're consumers, right? Yeah. So what do you have to say about that? So in this whole discussion, the first thing I want to bring to light is Every age group requires a certain kind of skincare. I have seen that 20 years, 25 years, they watched all these commercials on TV and they go and buy something what a 50 year would need. And they end up with acne and skin irritation wow. and all those things. So one needs to understand what is one skin type and then go further with the cosmeceuticals. But still just to talk about the newer products here hyaluronic acid is one which is one of my favorite products because you will not really see any reaction with it but it takes care of your hydration needs but again hyaluronic acid is coming in different formulations for a younger person i may not like to give a very thick or for acne prone skin then again for an older person i may require something which gives more moisturization then there's also percentage between 2, 4, 10%. When we go over the counter, normally we are not sure about the percentage in the product. Right. Mm. So that is one thing. Uh, then niacinamide. I think that's one of the trending things right now. Yes. Everybody wants a niacinamide Use cream. Use <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I've used it's a promising skin. product, yes. Okay. It helps with glow, okay. it helps with acne skin, and it's good. So both the products we just named are good for every age group, but we just need to see the formulation has to be correct. Okay. You know, something very interesting now, what is happening, people are shifting from retinol to bioretinols. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is Correct. something called bioretinol. I have no idea about yes. that. Yes, so bioretinol is basically a plant-based retinol. So uh, you must have heard about um, some creams with bukichol and all these things. Yeah, so yeah. that is bioretinol. Oh, that is plant-based retinol. So that is a very interesting shift which is coming because that really saves the skin from a lot of side effects what people would experience with retinol. Oh, wow, really? And, I'm going to try one. Yeah. <laughs> Being That's organic can. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So something which is really trending now, which is going to be taking over retinol is copper peptides. Oh. Have you heard about them? No. I've heard of collagen peptides. Oh. No, copper peptides. So they're supposed to stimulate collagen and they don't cause the irritation of retinol. So now there are a lot of creams for filling up the wrinkles, which don't have retinol and stuff, but they're coming with copper peptide formulations. And, and that, so that is something that's going to be the new molecule of 2024. Oh, wow. I just love what I do. It's like a painting, you know. Okay. It's it's where science and creativity meet. I well, just you have love a blank canvas with Namita. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've ever gotten anything done other than superficial creams and all this stuff. So you have a blank canvas. You should take her under your wing and do that. <laughs> yeah, me. Definitely me. My skin is a virgin skin. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, there must be a lot of people who think like me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to hear about all these new trends in technology that is coming. So, um, and, you know, being in the tech, uh, I am always fascinated by the way the tech is coming uh, in every field, even if in, in, in skincare. You in, know, there's yeah. so many lasers. So many radio frequency techniques, ultrasound, uh, even in injectables. When I started injecting, the concept was to inject these lines. Today, the concept has totally changed. We want to restore you. So we inject you laterally, we inject you up there, and we try to pull you back rather than just filling a defect. We try to make it more scientifically getting you youthful without creating new faces here wow. so everything is evolving every day it's so interesting it just keeps you in there and it just keeps your patient in there what about when people um experiment with like home skincare like you get so many diy skin you know recipes and like routines like put rice water on and guilty you know like i've done that and then you put a face mask on and you do all this stuff now should they be seeking professional advice before doing this because I yes totally so um uh, when we are using home care products we don't realize that is everything is raw of what we would have used um uh, in a more processed form with what doctor would have given you or what somebody would have suggested. And everybody doesn't need the same skin care like we've always been talking. It's very, very different. Now, I find a lot of people and they tell me, we've used aloe vera on our face. We've used this ah. fresh aloe vera. Yes. What is the property of a plant of aloe vera? Why do we grow it? Because it absorbs pollution, right? You must have heard with all the pollution in NCR. So the aloe vera we are using is the one which has absorbed all the pollution. Are we being able to resource that from Amazon? If we can, then yes, I would still say it's okay. But right now, the aloe vera we are using is totally pollution. Wow. So we have to rationalize. And we, you know, there's a concept. The more it burns, the better it works. That's so bad. <laughs> yeah. But that it's is fiber. not it's right. Fiber. It's kind of calm, yeah. it's itchy, it's burning, but it's working, it's working. It's working. But when you get out, your face is red, dude. Like, yeah, it's also. I know someone, one of my friends is telling me, yeah, look, now oxygen is coming, when you work out, it's red, it's just that. That's why you see it, it's good. Yeah, so that's, that's a very wrong concept. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right. Uh, yeah, you're right. And you know, uh, I I remember a couple of my friends. They look completely different now, and I see they're completely their personality has changed. I mean, yes, they they have gone under a certain uh, treatment, skin treatment, but I see the level of confidence in them. You know, it's just that mm. they're a different personality, and they were so laid, low confident, low self esteem. So somewhere, I feel it's not about healing the skin. I think it's about healing the body in the traumas, maybe in from inside. What we see every day. I have a few stories to share here. Just short, short stories we can share. 
So I have a pan person who had this uh, carcinoma of right breast. So whenever we are working on the right side of her face, even if she feels pain or not, she starts crying. That's such a release factor for her. Um, so everything is connected. That's what. That's how we started. You know, when we said you then anti aging. Then I have this very lovely story. I had a friend who who really didn't know I do all these things because she was a friend from a different sector. And I was talking to one of my patients and she overheard and she came to me and she said, you know, I want lip fillers. I said, okay, we'll do it. Then we did it. And she thanked me so much. She said, I couldn't have trusted anybody. And this is something I wanted from my childhood. Wow. And here I have it today. So it was such a big mental uh, support for her. I have seen people just doing a little bit on their face and getting the right relationship, right thing. It's not about face. It's about your attitude inside. It's about that inch of confidence which yeah. we help to give them. So it is not face. And the, it's vice versa also. If your mind is not right, you are unstable, your anxiety, stress, your skin will reflect. So it's connected in a whole circle. And that's why we have to work in the whole circle. So, uh, Smriti, I read in your details that one of the things you do is vaginal rejuvenation. Now, that yes. sounds really interesting. Um, can you explain a little bit about it? Okay. So anything um, with the, we're like little kids. Anything with vaginal, we, we get all excited. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Rejuvenation is like with with the aging factor coming in. <laughs> Definitely, it, it is exciting. Absolutely, it's it's a very important part, but unfortunately, a less top part of our lives. Right. Um. Uh, so you know when we are still not too much of aging has happened, and we just in the initial stages. Then things like laser rejuvenation, even there are USFD approved lasers. Um, I don't name them here, but there are USFD approved lasers which help us to rebuild the collagen and the epithelium, you know, all the dryness. So here we are not just looking at one purpose, but we are also looking at relieving the signs and symptoms which are happening up with aging, you know, dryness. Um, urinary incontinence so it's not just about one thing it's about the whole spectrum so every age here we include then PRP the wonder thing which we have you inject it in hair hair grow you inject it on face it works on stem cells of face you inject it in your bones joints it helps with your joints. You inject it in your tooth. It helps with your implants. You inject it there and it helps us to stimulate, um, to build new collagen, to cause tightening, to cause more uh, hydration in the area. So, yeah, so PRP is a wonderful thing. Then, of course, we can, you know, do fillers, fillers for the labias and just changing the shape. There's something known as, I don't know if you've heard about G and O shots. So G shot and O shot are like to do with the sexual pleasure and satisfaction. Just to help yeah, the, people yeah, reach that because that O's is shot. very yeah, important. Yeah. Part of yeah. 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 Orgasms, uh, so that was spot as well. So you can like help it become more sensitive or absolutely and prp prp is a wonderful molecule so that's the first thing one would do is like inject prp get more collagen more blood vessels there more nerve endings there wow but, but just you know, to be clear this is not just about sexual pleasure of course that's really important according to me that's a huge part of just one of our basic needs but it's also about like you know like you said bladder urine control and things like that which after a certain age or sometimes with childbirth does get damaged so that can help medically with those issues as well right absolutely it's the same way how we are doing anti-aging for face we're doing anti-aging for different parts of our body <laughs> it's the same <laughs> wow but you know at times like people like me i would say oh my god is it safe 
what if i screw up my face what if i get it once and then it becomes a very vicious cycle for me to just do it again otherwise i look more older these are you know thought that comes into one's mind who just not much of it explore such uh, products or technology so what do you have to say for people like me once we get into all the product number one go to somebody who can understand your skin don't do it over the counter i've seen a lot of spas people who are not professionally trained started doing all these things so you need to go to somebody and like i told you it doesn't have to be too red too strong or too burning to give you results it has to be just right for you to give you results anything which is overdone can lead to problems no, um know. the person has to understand it's about restoring you know cosmetology is not about me it's about you it's about what you want it's not about what i feel i can guide you on a pattern but it's about you now with fillers we talk about emotional attributes so we don't ask you what you want we ask you what you feel do you feel you're looking yeah. sad do you feel you're looking saggy do you feel you're looking worried do you oh. feel you're looking angry and that's how we assess the face so that's again one of the recent advances which is happening in the science so it's not any more about this line the spot this thing no it's about the whole it's about getting everything together at once wow, and it's safe it's, everything I mean, is safe if done in proper ways great wow well i for me today's episode is an eye opener for so many yes reasons yeah. i i i have like i broaden my you know knowledge about beauty and products and uh, <laughs> cosmetology um wow no truly uh, you're right namita like samriddhi honestly it's been such a pleasure talking to you and hearing about this stuff because a lot of what you're saying like the holistic point of view i wasn't so sure what you meant but this is with science this is not like away from science or a step off this is amazing thank you so much for joining us and thank you for thank you so like much. she said broadening our knowledge base on this yeah. thank you so much Um, yeah it was a pleasure to talk to you thank you thank you so much so guys that's all on talk to us today you heard it from the experts uh, mouth you guys got to go to a professional know your skin type before you go to the over the counter things when they have the buzzwords like talking about the retinols or the niacinamides <laughs> Yes. So don't just use those words. Know what the consistency is. Know your age bracket. Know what your skin type is. All this knowledge was amazing. And for any questions, we have given the contact information for Dr. Simrithi uh, Minhas in the description below. Please go to her. She is amazing. Um, and if you guys liked what we watched, please do comment in the comment section below or email us at hello at talktoustoday dot com. And let your friends know where to find us. Yes, and the most important one is don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay notified of our new videos every Friday at six pm. Thanks for joining us on Talk This Today. Remember to talk about Talk This Today. Keep smiling. Keep laughing. Keep laughing. <laughs> and yes, keep talking. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Sudhi. Thank you for joining us.